And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Robert Frost was wrong. Now, I know this might not make a very good bumper sticker, but he was wrong. I saw a divergent wood, and I took the one less traveled. If that's supposed to be inspiring and make you want to go, I'm going to go the harder way. As a Christian, he's wrong. I'll tell you how, why and how he's wrong. Two mountains. There's one mountain that we see constantly. We see the mountain of this world. The mountain of self-gratification as soon as possible. We don't regard prayer as we ought. And we by virtue of that, shovel ash in our mouths. We cannot speak. In that mountain, Christ is separated from Himself. Christ is separated from Himself. And this is what I mean. When you, when he is, when you separate Christ, you always put something else in that place. So when Christ separates Himself, it is because you have given yourself over to vile and evil and, and horrible things. In other words, you have given yourself over to sin. And what does Christ say? You do not, if you do not forgive the sins of any, they will not be forgiven unto you. So there, we, got a, we got a little diverging of wood here. On that mountain... They, the, those who are on the mountains are typically what you would know as atheists, agnostics, maybe well-spoken life coaches. And what they're doing on that mountain is going through the fauna and the, and the flowers and the, and at, at, the, at the beginning of the mountain. And as he's going up, it gets a little more rigorous, a little more difficult. Then all of a sudden, he's got... Uh, pine needles scratching his face and he begins to wonder what what is up this hill but he knows that there's something missing in his heart so he climbs he climbs and he climbs and he climbs and, and the further he climbs the more dense the foliage gets the more dense the, the uh, forest gets but man there's got to be something over there if there's if, this, if it's at this dense, there's got to be something good for me over there. If I just work hard and I, and I push through, I can make a path of my own. But on that mountain, once you push through to find that hole in your heart, whether it be money, I know that's the cliche one, or anything, you will always have the hole. There's nothing on the other side of the trees. There's nothing to fill it. Christ gives these people, pagans really, over to themselves. And no matter how far they travel, no matter how hard they work to get through those trees, they will fall off the cliff and into the hands of Satan. However, we have another mountain. This mountain is one that Peter and James and John went up. And when they went up, it was easy. The path had already been set by Christ on the way up to the mountain. 
And so they just followed in the Savior's footsteps. All the way up. And once they got up there, they got to see something that no one else sees until the book of Revelation. They see Christ with a glowing face teaching them and telling them that He is God. That's His true divinity. Behold, look at the Son of God. There's two natures. One, His human nature. The other, His divine nature. But not two natures, but one. So, Peter, James, and John get up there and they see Christ glowing like a star. And on top of that, you have Moses and Elijah. Or the law and the prophets. And Christ, when He glued, He was, he was uh, in interpersonal communication, He was saying, this is what I am here for. To, to fulfill the law, to fulfill the prophets. Don't you see me? Look at me. Look at me, Peter. Look at me, James. Look at me, John. I am God. And then you see Christ use His divinity to love our humanity. So even when Peter, James, and, when Peter, James, and John Peter, rather, wanted to build three tents. What that was ultimately doing it would, it, is that it would keep Christ from the cross. If they built tents there, they would not move because it was perfection. In a sinful world, perfection. So he could not set up tents because Christ knew he had to be crucified. And once again, you see his, his, his divinity fold into himself and his humanity come through. And what is, true, what is true humanity to Christ? True humanity to Christ is to always forgive. For every leper to touch. The woman with perpetual bleeding stopped. The man whose eyes were blind and he spit on his, on his hands, rubbed it in the dirt, and put it on his eyes. That's the humanity of Jesus Christ. And so is this. When God spoke, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I'm going to read that again, but in the context of of verse 9. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. See, the God the Father sees through the eyes of His crucified Son. And He sees you. He sees you through those eyes. Through the crucified eyes. You are His beloved Son, in whom He is well pleased. Forgiveness, absolution, an easy road because every step that, that gets to the transfiguration, it's not breadcrumbs that lead there. It's bloody holes and feet. Just follow the blood trail. And there you'll find Christ. No one Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead.
crucifixion of Christ and the resurrection of Christ are going to come in the future after this text. But why do you think he did it? Why do you think he transfigured himself? Why did he let those three see him? It was another epiphany saying, Behold, I am God, and what I do with my divinity is lay down my life so that my Father may pick it up again. And if that's not enough, which it is, but God always gives us more through Jesus Christ. We have that same person who is transfigured on our altar today. We are going to eat His flesh and drink His blood. The same transfigured one. The same one who also Jesus touched them and Jesus said, rise and have no fear. That's what He says to Peter, James, and John. I don't have any better words. Rise and have no fear. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.